Hello friends, today we will continue our journey through the great controversy as we look more deeply into God's final warning that will be given to the entire world just before Jesus comes. In our previous video, we saw how the fourth angel of Revelation 18 comes down from heaven with great authority, delivering the very important message that Babylon the Great is fallen and that God's people are to come out for her sins have reached to heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. You see, the book of Revelation is filled with symbols and as we saw earlier, Babylon represents a confused and fallen system of worship that tramples on the law of God. The warning given by the angel of Revelation 18 brings into focus the life and death decision that everyone will face at the end of time. The choice to follow God and be true to his word or to follow human devised legislation that goes against God's law. We read in the great controversy that the Sabbath will be the great test of loyalty for it is the point of truth especially controverted. When the final test shall be brought to bear upon men then the line of distinction will be drawn between those who serve God and those who serve him not. For you see, friends, although it does not seem possible perhaps now, there will come a time, and I think it's very near in the future, when the powers of earth uniting to war against the commandments of God will decree that all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, shall conform to the customs of the church by the observance of the false Sabbath. All who refuse compliance will be visited with civil penalties, and it will finally be declared that they are deserving of death. Before this happens, however, everyone will clearly understand what the issues are and will have the opportunity to choose for themselves whether to follow God's law or human devised legislation that goes against the law of God. Those who accept the sign of submission to earthly powers will receive the mark of the beast, while the others, choosing the token of allegiance to divine authority, receive the seal of God. During this time, the message of the third angel of Revelation 14 will be powerfully delivered worldwide. God will work through humble instruments leading the minds of those who consecrate themselves to his service. Now, while some may argue all that is needed to win people to Christ is the example of a pure Christian life, at this time it is important that people hear the direct word of God. Those who deliver this message will be filled with the Holy Spirit and God will give them the right words to say. We're told that thousands upon thousands will listen who have never heard words like these. In amazement, they hear the testimony that Babylon is the church, fallen because of her errors and sins, because of her rejection of the truth sent to her from heaven. And as the eyes of the people are opened, despite opposition from the established church leaders, many will take their stand for God and his truth. On the other hand, there will be those who have known God's word, but in the end will decide to take their stand with the world. We are given this warning in the great controversy. As the storm approaches, a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message, but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth, abandon their position and join the ranks of the opposition. By uniting with the world and partaking of its spirit, they have come to view matters in nearly the same light. And when the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy popular side. Men of talent and pleasing address who once rejoiced in the truth employ their powers to deceive and mislead souls. Nevertheless, 
despite opposition and persecution. God's people will continue to move forward, facing similar trials to the reformers of the past. Wycliffe, Huss, Luther, Tyndale, Wesley, and others who urge that all doctrines must be tested by the Bible and the Bible alone. We're told that different periods in the history of the church have each been marked by the development of some special truth, adapted to the necessities of God's people at that time. Every new truth has made its way against hatred and opposition. And now, at the end of time, God commands his servants to present the last invitation of mercy to the world. They cannot remain silent except at the peril of their souls. This will be an amazing time as God's Spirit is poured out upon his people, giving them the strength and power to proclaim his message around the world. Servants of God with their faces lighted up and shining with holy consecration will hasten from place to place to proclaim the message from heaven. By thousands of voices all over the earth, the warning will be given. My brothers and sisters, amazing times are just ahead of us. Jesus is coming soon. He longs to pour out his spirit upon his people in the latter rain power so that we can finish the work he has given us to do. Now is the time to draw close to him in full confidence, trusting in his holy word and following him wherever he leads. I invite you to join me through his power in making that commitment to him today. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we know that momentous times are coming, times that will try the souls of men and women. We know that we must lean completely upon your power, that in and of ourselves we have nothing in which to combat the evil intent of the devil. But with you on our side, with us leaning upon you, we have all the resources of heaven and that you will carry us through to the end of time, protecting us as you have promised in your holy word. Now, Lord, help us to stand firmly for Bible truth, regardless of what may come. Help none of us to be swayed from that foundational, beautiful, sacred word of God. Lord, keep us faithful. Help us to stand for you. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.